Welcome and greetings, career-minded superstars. You are listening to the exclusive Career Coach, your podcast for all things career. And I'm Lisa Edwards, the indispensable career coach for superstars just like you. Now let's dig into this week's topic, shall we? Go from dragging yourself to work each day to finding a job you love. The Career Spring program is for high achieving and ambitious mid level professionals like you who are looking for a job that uses your zone of genius, recognizes your value, and pays you what you're worth. If you're ready to learn more, schedule a complimentary consult using the link to my calendar in the show notes. Be sure to follow me on Exclusive Career Coaching on Facebook. Lisa Edwards on LinkedIn and Lisa.Edwards on Instagram. Greetings. How's it going, guys? How you doing? So one of the things that I work with clients on is doing their prep work before a job interview. So today we're going to talk about how to research an employer before a job interview. I want to make it clear, however, that it is important to do research before you apply for a job. So not just, oh, I've got the interview. Let me see if I want to work there. The alternative when you don't do that is, you know, you see a job posted online. It looks perfect. You've never heard of the company, but you apply anyway. And soon they reach out to you to schedule an interview. And then as you prepare for the interview, you find out that maybe their business practices are lacking. There's no commitment to DEI. Maybe there's a lack of environmental consciousness, financial woes, whatever it is that throws up a red flag for you. So then you decide that you definitely don't want to work at the company, but you agree to the interview for practice. This is a terrible idea. After all, you're you're not going to get any feedback from the interview. The interviewer is not likely to tell you what you did well and what you didn't. It's not going to be like a coaching session. So all you're going to do is practice the bad things that you're doing in an interview, what you think you should do. You're you're cementing bad behavior. But instead of that, I want you to do your research before you ever apply so that you know this is a company that you really want to work for and you can speak to that in your cover letter. I talked about all aspects of preparing for a job interview in episode 176, and I linked that in the show notes if you want to listen to that. So that was kind of all of the things. Today, we're going to get really specific on that research piece and really drill down a few more levels than I did in that episode, number 176. What I covered in that episode was researching the company, researching the company culture, researching the industry, and researching the product or service the company provides. So what what I want to talk about today is where should you look for that information? What information should you be looking for? And how do you analyze that information to make a decision as to whether you even want to apply for that company? So let's start with the where to research and what to look for, because those two things really go hand in hand. While I think company websites can be useful, I find them most helpful in answering questions around products or services, maybe divisions, maybe I want to see an org structure, you know, an org chart, company, corporate structure, those kind of things. It's all going to be positive on the company's website. You're not going to see anything negative about them. And I find it when I'm researching companies with my clients for various reasons, I find it very difficult to get the kind of information I'm looking for from the website. If I want to find out about company culture, I'm going to look at Glassdoor, and I might possibly, and I have, reached out to former employees of the company via LinkedIn. So I can do that advanced search function to find people who used to work there. Typically, they're going to be more honest with me than the ones who still work there. And, 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 you know, you don't want to assume that because they left that it was a negative experience. It absolutely doesn't have to be. You do want to make sure if you're going to go that route to speak to enough people, I would say three at minimum, so that you've got some data points and not just, you know, anomalous one person's perspective. If I want to find out about the industry the company is in and its competitors, I'm probably going to look at the Wall Street Journal, maybe industry journals. Wikipedia is actually one of my favorite places to look for this kind of information. I find it very easy to get what I'm looking for. 
And then there's public library resources as well. There's one now called Data Axle. It used to be called Reference USA. It's still around, but the name changed fairly recently. And you would definitely need to get that through a public library because it is a costly resource. We had it at the university that I worked at last as a great tool for students to research companies, particularly in cities that we didn't really have a strong employer base and maybe they wanted to move out to the west coast or something and we didn't have much of an idea of you know who the potential employers were in san francisco or los angeles or somewhere like that reference usa now data axle could be a really good resource to get that information specifically what i'm looking for here is who are the company's major competitors and where this company stacks up are they number one are they a brand new player you know where where do they fit in the industry that they're in and i also want to find out what are their brand differentiators what are their unique attributes what do they bring to the table that differentiates them from their competition while I can find out information about the company's products and or services from their website, I really am going to need to look elsewhere to find information about the product or service classes that it's in. So in other words, it's great that I know how many widgets company X makes every year and how they distribute them. But if I don't know what a widget is and what it does and why it's important, that information isn't of much use to me. And the company's website probably isn't going to tell me why you should buy a widget. It's going to tell me how many widgets we sold. So that's the kind of thing that I want you to look for is information about the company itself, its competitors, its place in the market, its differentiators, you know, things about its challenges. What is it facing right now? What are you seeing in these journals about growth, new initiatives, or the reverse? They're, they're downsizing. They just had a huge layoff or a reduction in force. What's going on there? The next question then is how do I analyze this information as I gain it? What do I do with it? And there's no right or wrong answers here. You're simply holding the company's qualities up against what's most important to you. So one of the things that I do with clients is when, when we're working one-on-one -on, -one on their job search is identifying their ideal employer. Because then again, that's the yardstick against we're going to measure these other companies and opportunities to see whether they're a good potential fit for them or not. So my clients are frequently concerned with things like... Is the company in an industry I want to work in and or have experience in? Is that industry viable right now? Can I get on board with the products and or services the company makes? Are they in harmony with my beliefs and values? So it's not just about the company culture. We want to get down to a granular level. If they make something that is diametrically opposed to the way you live your life, or they provide a service that you don't believe in and cannot get on board with, that's probably going to be a mismatch. Another question, is the company in growth mode or is there signs that the company is in financial distress? So where are they fiscally? Because obviously a company that is stronger fiscally means there is a less likelihood that they're going to have a massive layoff, not completely eliminated, but let's do what we can at our end to minimize the chances that we're going to be looking for a job again in six months. Does the company's mission and vision resonate with me or have I found and have I found evidence that they walk the talk? So number one, do I like what I see with their mission and vision, whatever they espouse as their their thing, you know, their, their rules that they live by? And then secondly, am I seeing evidence that they walk that talk or is it just pretty little words on a wall that everybody's memorized? And oftentimes it's the things like Glassdoor and talking to former employers and employees who will give me that inside scoop as to whether this company actually lives by those words. Also, is the company's size and life cycle phase a good fit for me? What about the number of employees, the revenue? Is it a private company or public? So what I'm doing here is, for example, I have clients who are very clear in that they thrive in the startup environment. They like wearing you know, 24 different hats in the average day. And they like the the uncertainty and the nimbleness, agility with which they have to work. Other people want to work in a more, a larger, more established company where, you know, the roles are very clearly defined and change is slow to happen. Maybe they are kind of change resistant. So knowing that is really important. 
Also, you know, size of the company, the number of employees, revenue, that can be particularly important with someone who, say, is in HR or in a financial role. They might want to move into a company that is, you know, somewhat bigger than what they've been working with in terms of the number of employees or the the revenue. The next question, is the company culture, what is the company culture and how does it fit with what I'm looking for? So, you know, there's the mission and then there's the vision. But how does that operationalize in the company culture? Now, there are those of you listening who would love nothing more than to come into a very culture broken organization and turn it around because of whatever role you hold. You're an org dev person. You do organizational development or whatever it may be. You're in HR in some capacity, learning and development. Maybe you're a, uh, the CEO and you want to come in and fix it. That's your brand. It's so important to know that, that that's what you're looking for. There are other people that want to come into something that they can kind of keep the, keep the momentum going. Don't rock the boat. I don't want to, I'm not trying to make big changes and I don't need to. So I want to make sure that whatever the company culture is, good, bad, broken, perfect, whatever it is, that fits with what I'm looking for. Next question, where is the company located geographically and am I willing to move there? Is the company, if the company is nearby, what do I think about my daily commute? If I want a remote or hybrid job, what does the company offer in that regard? And does this seem like it's going to stay this way or am I likely? And I've got a client, actually I've had a few clients recently who have had to leave their jobs because they were hired during or right after COVID under one set of circumstances. And one day the company says, oh, no, now everybody's got to be back in the office and they live, you know, an hour and a half away or something like that. Next question, what else is really important to me and my next employer and how does this company measure up? So what else? What are some other things? It could. There's no, again, no right or wrong answers here. What is important is that you have assessed this for yourself and then done the work to find out whether this company measures up. Are there things I can't evaluate until I am in the interview stage, such as how I connect with my potential boss And what specifically do I want to find out about the boss at that stage? One of the activities that I do with my clients when we are assessing employers is they identify these things that are most important to them. And let's say that one of them is I need to really connect with my boss. Well, we kind of put a placeholder in that because they can't measure that up front in all probability unless it just happens to be someone that you know maybe that's recruiting you to come in this job well you know what he's like but in most cases we're not going to know that until we get to the interview phase and so it's really important that we recognize okay that's really important to me and I want to I want to make sure that when I get to the interview phase I have certain questions that I can ask of that potential boss of other coworkers, whoever I can ask it of to see, does this person measure up in terms of the way that he or she supports me, the way he or she is either hands off or maybe at the other end of the extreme, a micromanager, where is this person in terms of, you know, supporting me for further growth and development, all of those kind of things, whatever it is that you are looking at that thing that is so important to you to make sure this company measures up. To wrap up, there is much research that you can do before ever applying for a position. And I would recommend 15 to maybe 30 minutes of research at the most. And that's going to keep you from applying to jobs that ultimately you wouldn't be interested in. So if you think about it from a time standpoint, it probably would take me 30 minutes or more to apply for a job. Well, let's do 30 minutes of work up front. And if I still want to apply for the job, number one, Okay, I've only lost 30 minutes. I'm, I'm, you know, I haven't spent days. Secondly, this is research that I would need to do anyway before I get the interview. So I've, I've circumvented, like I've, I've, I've been proactive about getting what I need. And also, I want you to look at it from the perspective of motivation. And this is something I've been working with my clients a lot on. It seems to be in kind of in the zeitgeist with my clients lately is When you apply to jobs that you're not really interested in or that you subsequently realize you don't want to work for, you are putting yourself in a very disempowering situation. You're spending time, spending energy 
on a job you don't really want, and then you're mad when they don't offer you the job. It's crazy, right? And this is what we do, and I see it over and over again. I would much rather you apply to fewer jobs, go for quality over quantity, and really give it all every time you apply to the position. Now, to be clear, when you get to the interview phase, you're going to want to do even more research as you prep for the interview. I covered this topic in episode 85, developing the questions to ask the interviewer, and I highly recommend that. I put that link in the show notes as well. And next week, we're going to talk about how to develop that list of target employers, which will lean heavily on this research. So these two episodes are going to really go hand in hand. But hopefully this has given you some ideas of, you know, if you've been one of those people that have have heard ad nauseum that you're supposed to research employers, but you don't really understand what you're supposed to be looking for. And as I have said in many of the interviewing episodes that I've done, this is where I like your interview questions to come from. We're going to talk a little bit more about that next week. But rather than having canned kind of low-level interview questions that you're asking everybody, they're they're non-differentiating you know, sort of from the approved laundry list of interview questions, this allows you to develop very granular questions to ask the employer because you have this depth of knowledge about the company, the industry, the products, services, all of that. So hopefully this has been helpful. And next week, we'll talk about how to develop that list of target employers. So take care and I'll see you next week. You've been listening to the Exclusive Career Coach with Lisa Edwards, CEO of Exclusive Career Coaching. It would be great if you would rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. Also, I want to be your career coach, so be sure to ask questions about your career management challenges and job search situation. Until next time.